Hello, this is Kaylee Gonzalez here with MLC CAD Systems. Thank you for joining me for this video on getting started with the Collaborative Designer for SOLIDWORKS. So what exactly is this Collaborative Designer for SOLIDWORKS? If you have never heard of these terms, it is actually a role that is available through the 3D Experience platform. This role provides tools for data management. The main objective here is that it connects our SOLIDWORKS desktop application to your company's 3D experience platform. What can this role actually do? One of the first things that you're going to be able to do with this role is download and install an add-in that's going to work inside of your SOLIDWORKS desktop application. The add-in will allow you to upload, store, manage, share files online directly from SOLIDWORKS, and that will help us with organizing, viewing, and even marking up files in the SOLIDWORKS add-in and the web apps. So we're gonna take a look at a situation of the collaborative designer for SOLIDWORKS in action. We're going to see how we can access and download the add-in for the role, save SOLIDWORKS files to the platform, organize and search for files once uploaded, and then how we can access those uploaded files in our web apps. We're going to start with accessing and downloading the add-in. We are going to be starting inside of our web browser interface. So as I access my 3D experience platform, I'm going to click on the compass in the upper left-hand corner. This is going to give me a list of all of the apps and roles that are available or assigned to me. I'm going to find the collaborative designer for SOLIDWORKS role. Once I access that, we will see we have a Design with SOLIDWORKS app that we can then install. Now, there's some additional items in here as well, such as Inspect with SOLIDWORKS Inspection and Render with SOLIDWORKS Visualize, both of which can be downloaded for those standalone applications. We're going to focus on SOLIDWORKS. So as I click on the little down arrow, I'm going to have the ability to either install a hotfix in my situation or install from the very first time. This is going to launch the 3D Experience Installation Manager. This will download and install my 3D Experience add-in for SOLIDWORKS. Once the add-in has been installed, we can go into SOLIDWORKS and access the add-in through our regular add-ins dialog box. And this is going to open on the right-hand side. You will need to log into your 3D Experience platform also, you will be prompted for which collaborative space you're going to be working in. This list is going to be specific to your company. And you'll also choose an access role. I'm going to leave mine on leader. That provides me the most ability to edit and add files. After a couple of moments, all of the files from our assembly will be loaded in the My Session add-in on the right. So we saw how we were able to access and download the add-in for the collaborative designer role. The next situation we're going to do is we're going to see how we can save those SOLIDWORKS files directly to our 3D experience platform. As we jump into SOLIDWORKS, we are going to be focusing our attention on the right-hand side where our add-in is displayed. Notice that we can still access our compass, get all of our roles and apps, and even launch them as applicable through the add-in. We'll also see the My Session information along with our collaborative space. Later, we'll see how we can do some additional searching, but we're also noticing that there is the status. So all of these components have the orange icon next to them, meaning that they have not been uploaded to the platform. At the bottom, we have our action bar. All of these tabs are going to have the ability to upload files to the 3D Experience platform. There are other functions as well, such as make items visible, relationships, printing, exporting. There's many tools and functions we can utilize through the action bar. I'm going to go ahead and upload and save all these files to my 3D Experience platform. Now, the first thing that we're going to see is actually a copy screen. All of these files are going to get copied to a local 3D experience folder. Think of this like a cached folder. This is the first step in uploading these files. It only takes a couple of seconds for these files to get copied into that specific directory. 
Once completed, now we'll see the Save to 3D Experience. And notice here that in the middle, we have a green check mark status. We want to see that those are OK, which means they're ready to be uploaded. Once we verify the status, we can enter perhaps a revision comment. These are recommended when uploading for the first time or any change that you have on the part itself. It's going to provide history and rich information on what's going on with your designs. We can choose to convert our files to the 3D Experience format. We can also um, either get CAD Mastership if we don't already have it. Also inside of the Save to 3D Experience, we have the ability to specify which bookmark we want these files to be placed in. Now we have a dedicated video on bookmarks. If you haven't seen it, I recommend that you go and check it out. Bookmarks in general are a way that you can organize files and projects. They are very specific to users. You can share them. But what we can actually do through the save icon is we can either use an existing bookmark or create a new one. So I'm going to choose the hierarchy for my specific bookmark, where I want this to reside amongst my other files. And I'm going to rename this bookmark to something specific regarding this assembly. Once the bookmark has been named, we can go ahead and access the bookmark itself. And we'll see that there's actually nothing inside of this. In the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to a save apply to selected. All of the files are selected in the save to dialog. And we'll see the bookmark column actually become populated with the new bookmark that I just created. So I now have an idea of exactly where these files are going and it allows me to start my organization right from the initial save process. As I save these files, they are all actually being uploaded from that local folder directly into our 3D Experience platform. And we can see the success with the green check mark next to each component. Once uploaded, we'll also see the revision, maturity state, and we can also see which collaborative space they reside in, the name, and even the file type as well. So we saw how we can save our SOLIDWORKS files to our 3D Experience platform. Next, we're going to continue thinking about organizing and then also searching for files. So as I go back into SOLIDWORKS, we had just completed a successful upload to the platform. Again, we can see that with all the green check marks inside of the add-in. Now, if I want to make any type of change to these files, I will want to actually lock a specific file or subassembly. The lock process is going to show a little key next to those particular files. This is allowing me as the user to have full read write access to those files, but it also prevents anyone else from my company from being able to make changes to those files. It's going to really reduce a lot of duplicated work and make sure that we're all working with the most recent files. I could then open up this subassembly, make any changes. And as I continue to make changes, I can then see inside of my add-in, perhaps that orange icon indicating that something has changed and those changes have not been uploaded. So I can always right click and resave individual components to the platform. This is going to guarantee that the most current information is going to be available to the rest of my team directly on the platform and where they will be able to access those files. Once the save process has been completed, I can then right click on that same component and choose to unlock it. Again, that's going to relinquish read write access and make it so that other members of my team could then lock that file to make their own changes. Now, when we go through a generic search through the add-in, the search is through the entire platform that your company has. So we can search through a massive amount of information in really just seconds. It's a great way to pinpoint specific files. So here, I actually search for that same subassembly. I could open them directly from the search results window, but I can also see any additional matches to that search, see the description, the name when they were modified. We also have some additional ways we can search. 
We can launch advanced searches. We can actually do favorites or even search through my content. All are great ways to search through smaller subsets of data. We also have the ability to access and create 6W tags. Again, that is in conjunction with searching and can allow you to create very specific searches, almost like finding a needle in a haystack. So now that we've seen how we can further organize editing through lock and unlock and how to search for files, what can we do with all this information now that it has been uploaded through our add-in? We'll see how we can access these through our web apps. I'm going to go back into my web browser application. And here, we're actually seeing the bookmark where I uploaded all these files to. I can view any of these files in my 3D play so I can see a three-dimensional representation of the part. I'll also see a thumbnail of the individual components through my bookmarks as well as a revision if the components are locked or unlocked by myself or different members of my team. Just tons of information. And I can start dragging and dropping these files into these other applications, such as 3D Play. Or I could drag and drop into XDesign, XShape. And I can even start sharing the designs with other members of my team in order to start conversations and collaboration on the design. This is the first step that we can take to allow everyone access into the designs we're working on. And we can even open with SOLIDWORKS or Simulia applications directly from our bookmarks bar. So we now have a huge amount of versatility in what we can do with these files once uploaded to the platform. So we've seen how we can access and download the add-in, save SOLIDWORKS files to the platform, organize and search for files, and then access those uploaded files through the web apps. Thank you for joining me on this video on getting started with the Collaborative Designer for SOLIDWORKS. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to us at mlc-cad.com. We're happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks and have a great day.